In this video, we're going to learn how to read and store each line of a file into an array of strings using C++. So here we have a file with five lines of text in it. What we want to do is store each one of these lines as a string in an array of strings. So the first thing we'll do is declare a string variable to store the file name of the file that we're going to open. We'll call the variable file name. We'll prompt the user to enter in the file name of the file to open. So we'll have cout file name colon to prompt the user with the text file name colon. Next we'll use cin to store the file name that the user enters into the file name string variable. So we'll have cin and then file name. So next to open the file with this file name and read the contents of the file, we're going to use an ifstream object. To use an ifstream object, we'll have to include the fstream library. So up here we'll have include fstream. Next we can declare the ifstream object with ifstream and then file. And we'll use this file object here to access the file. So the first thing we'll do is open the file. Down here we'll have file.open and we'll pass as an argument file name. So in order to read the contents of the file, we first need to open the file. This open member function of the ifstream file object will allow us to open the file. And by passing in the file name that the user entered, we're going to try to open that file. Now it's possible that opening the file could fail. Perhaps the file doesn't exist. The fail member function is going to return true if there's been a problem opening the file. If there's been a problem opening the file, we'll exit the program with an error message and status. So here we'll have if file.fail is true. So if there's been a problem opening the file, fail is going to return true. And in that case, we're going to output an error message and we're going to exit with an error status. So we'll have C out file fail to open, followed by an end line, and then return one. We're going to return one instead of returning zero because returning one is a signal to the shell, to the terminal here, that something has gone wrong in the execution of our program. So if instead the fail member function returns false, that means the file did open successfully, and we're now ready to start reading the content from the file. So we should now create our array of strings. Up here, we'll have string array with a length of max underscore lines. So this will create the array and we're giving it the length of max underscore lines. We'll create a preprocessor constant called max underscore lines that's going to be the maximum number of lines that we can store into this array. So up here we'll have number define max underscore lines 1000. So as the programmer we can always modify the value of this preprocessor constant and set it to whatever it needs to be for the purpose of our program. But this does establish the limit on how many lines we can read from the file because this is the length of our array. So next we can actually read the content from the file. Down here, we'll use a while loop to help us. So we'll have while not file dot EOF. So the EOF member function of the ifstream file object is going to return true once we've reached the end of the file. So, so long as this is not true, so long as we have not reached the end of the file, we're going to continue this loop and read the next line from the file and store it into our array of strings. So to store the data into the array of strings, we need to keep track of which index in the array of strings we're using because we want to store each line from the file as an element in our array of strings in sequence. So what we'll do is declare and initialize a variable called lines. And lines is going to keep track of how many lines we've read from the file so far. So we'll have int lines is equal to zero. And we're going to initialize lines to zero because initially we haven't read any lines from the file yet. So next we'll use getLine to actually read each line from the file. 
So here we'll have get line and then file and then array lines. And the get line function is going to read the next line from the file and store it into the array at the index lines. So each time the loop body executes, we're going to read the next line and store it into the array of strings. So we want to store each line from our file in its own array element, and we want to store them in sequence. So to do this, we can increment lines by one with each loop iteration. So right now, during the first loop iteration with lines set to zero, the first line from the file is going to be stored in the array at the index zero, the first index in the array. Then lines is going to be incremented by one. That means during the next loop iteration, we're going to store the next line from the file into the array at the index one, the next index in the array. And the loop will continue like this to store each line from the file into our array in sequence. Now, one possibility is that we actually reach max lines, that we actually reach the maximum number of lines that can be stored into our array. So we can check for this. We'll have here if lines is equal to max lines. So lines is keeping track of how many lines we've read in from the file so far. And if it reaches max lines, we can't read in any more lines. In that case, we'll output the message max storage reached. We'll also break to stop the loop because we can't store another string into our array. Now, once this loop is done, we'll have read all of the lines from the file into our array of strings. So at this point, we're now done working with the file. So we can close our access to the file. We can have file.close and the close member function will close the file. To verify that the lines of the file are now present in the array, we could output all of the strings in our array. So here we'll have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than lines, i plus plus. So we have the counter variable i go from zero up until lines because lines keeps track of how many lines we actually read from the file. So this loop will have the counter variable i go through all of the indexes of our array that contain a line from our file. What we'll do is output the element at that index. We'll have cout array at the index i followed by end line. So this should complete our program. We can save our program and compile it and test it out. So first we'll compile it and then we'll run it. And for the file name, I'll enter in file.txt. And we do get the five lines from file.txt as our output here. So this is how we can read and store the lines of a file into an array of strings using C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.